greatest. The greatest. The greatest. I know what I'm talking about. That's it. It's over. You be I. You tough, right? What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Tough glove boxing another live discussion you know what i'm saying if you check out the topic of discussions above we're gonna get into it first of all i want to say happy friday to everybody i hope everybody had a wonderful weekend yeah i mean a wonderful week and is about to have a wonderful weekend you understand what i'm saying um so we got some interesting information you know going on some some interesting boxing talk um i want to go ahead and say i want to thank the people that's here for the people that's on the way in here and for the people that won't be able to make it right but they'll catch the video on the spin around you know sometimes um we do our little content and people get busy but they come back and watch it again you know like the last live um caps and 4g is in the building salute to you king i see you in the building you understand i see you up here what's good with you you know so you know what's funny caps and 4g it's funny that you actually uh, came in here, right? Because I know that you've done some debating against a lot of the every, uh, pro every Spence channels, right? And I've seen some of them. What's crazy is um, I came across a video by Detail Boxing today, and I've realized that, man, even nine months, right? Nine months after the fight happened, they are still saying the same exact thing. Like, it's incredible. And Bo Ziennis really gave them the ammunition because he recently came out and said he didn't care how anybody felt. Every Spence wasn't the same. You know, he didn't look whatever, whatever excuses they had, which is fine if that's how you feel. There's nothing wrong with people feeling like something was wrong with every Spence, you know. Um, is it an excuse, right? I'm not saying it's an excuse as if it can't be true, but at the end of the day, it's an excuse, Right. And everything Terrence Crawford said they was going to say, they still saying, right? They still saying nine months later. And we're going to get into the main topic of discussion, which is about Bozy Ennis sending an invitation to Evo Spence, right? For him to be his trainer, saying that he would be down to, to take a look into that situation. But, you know, I like to start off with some of the smaller topics at first. You know, I like to start off with some of the smaller topics at first and then give people time to get in here that are going to get here. And then we hit the main topic, you know, about 20, 30 minutes into the live. And I and I feel you, uh, Caps and 4G, like Detail Boxing is, you know, he he's still pushing the same narrative saying that Edward Spence had a rib injury and everything. And that's fine. You know, the situation is and, and, and just to be real too, Caps and 4G, I call him uh, Manager Marty. You know what I'm saying? Because I know, you know, you got a lot of people go back and forth. The Jennifer, the Jennifer Farty thing is funny. You know, I've, I've laughed at it when I've heard it, you know, but I'm not, you know, he's never done anything for me to like really call him outside of his name. So I usually don't, you know, but whatever y'all got going on, you know, that's cool. But the, the, the thing is, right. The thing is like, even if you have an excuse, right. Which one is it? Just pick one. Pick one already. Bozian to say it looked like his eyes was bulging out, or or you know, whatever have you. Detail boxing says his rib was broken because he had a bulge on the side during the weigh-in. When literally Detail has a video of him saying how good both guys look on the weigh-in. Right now they go back and analyze it. He got a spot, right? But but then he had neurological damage. So it's just like at this point. Like, I'm really over it. Like, I'm I'm not even in the aha, Terrence Crawford one type of mood anymore because that shit happened already. In fact, we just got news that every Spence ducked the rematch. I just did a video about that. So I'm really over that situation, but it just baffles my mind that so many people are still interested in that type of, you know, just, just that type of content. Like, just constantly saying the same thing for months after months after month right and we spent said he wasn't going to make any excuses then came out and made excuses but just pick a narrative already that's all i'm saying just pick a narrative you know feel free to to you know did ever spence look like he looked in his other fights to me 
right? As a Terrence Bud Crawford fan, his fighting style was the same. Jab, jab, hook, hooks, you know, try to go to the body. You know, did he look as strong as he usually does? No, but I've attributed that to Terrence Crawford, making him look that weak. That's how I took it. Because if he just came off of the performance he came off with Ugas, right, then I have to say that that was Terrence Crawford just being that much greater. But if you feel differently, that's cool. Right. I'm a fan of both fighters. And I was actually glad we got an answer to the question so that we can move on past it. And I actually thought Spence might have had a better chance at 154 if he decided to take the sport seriously. But as you can see, he still ballooned up in weight. So, you know, it is what it is. Robert Garcia was recently asked if he is willing to train Neville Spence, because I will be honest with you. Um, Ryan Garcia wouldn't be a bad option for Evo Spence because, you know, Evo Spence has almost like a Mexican style of fighting. Right. But like, so at this time, right, it's just like Bozy in his trainer, Evo Spence, what would he really, could he really fix him? Like, could he really add? to Evo Spence at this age and at this stage in the game. And that's what I want to get into a little later on. But we need the Evo Sexuals to just go ahead and pick a narrative, pick one excuse that we can go with, right? Because I'm tired of it. When they asked Robbie Garcia if he would train Evo Spence, Robbie Garcia said he would consider it, but he would have to have a conversation with Evo Spence because he wants to know, like he understands that he's been through some things. He understands that he's been through a car accident and everything like that. But despite understanding that he's been through a car accident, he wants to ask him, listen, you know, they say it's because you was drinking. Is that the case? Because he said he doesn't want to bring that type of toxic situation into his, into his gym. Right. He said, every train, every, and he made a lot of sense. Every spent should be training by himself. Every spent should be around the other fighters, the other people training. Right. Like a team. And this is why I say these new age boxes now is no longer really just one specific trainer or it shouldn't be. I think that's more or less like how they used to do things back in the day. I think that right now you need like a team of trainers, even just for one fighter. At least you have somebody doing different things in there as opposed to everything falling on the shoulders of one person. You know, that's why when Terrence Crawford had three trainers, which was really the first time I've, I've known anyone to have that many trainers, that, that came to my attention, right? I was like kind of like thinking, okay, that makes sense. And then I see like Bozy Ennis, he's the lead trainer, but he has help in there with him to make sure the work gets done. Right. So, you know, go ahead. Um, you know, every Spence fans are, are sexuals because there's a difference between every Spence fans and every sexuals, just like there's a difference between Crawford fans and butt buddies. Right. We do got some Buck Crawford fans that go a little extreme. I heard one today on True Media Sports TV say he thinks Bud will dog walk David Benavidez. Now, I love Buck Crawford like every all the other Buck Crawford fans. Right. But come on, let's be real. That's unlikely. But like I say, we do have our our version of an heterosexual, but for Severance Crawford. So that's what I'm that's why I say I separate it. But. You know, they need to just go ahead and pick a narrative. Now, did anybody see the Devin Haney open workout? Which really wasn't, you know, I didn't see him working out. They claim he wasn't sparred, but I did see he showed up and he gave an interview. And I got to say, out of all of them, right, out of everybody that the young crop, Devin Haney, Tiafimo Lopez, um, Shakur Stevenson, right, Tank Davis, I feel like Devin Haney overall is Lee in the pack. Right. Just like he's he's making the money. He's building his legacy. Right. He He's he's it's like his his boxing career seems more complete to me than the rest, because you do have Shakur Stevenson, who also is well accomplished, silver medalist, two division world champion. Right. But he's not like his legacy is not really cemented yet. 
like like a Devin Haney would be for some for for, for uh, so many people to be calling him the future pound for pound number one because right now if they was the pick who had to be pound for pound number one between all of them it will have to be between Tiafimo Lopez and Devin Haney and and if y'all can look on my pound for pound list right now and y'all see that I have Tiafimo Lopez over Devin Haney in my pound for pound list because he was lineal I think maybe you know after these fights. I might have to switch that around. And the reason why I might have to switch it around is because Tiafimo Lopez had a chance to fight Raymond Marutala, who would have been coming up from 135 because he can't seem to get no smoke there. But he decided to fight Claggett. Like he chose Claggett. And this is somebody who we always say wants the best fights, trying to fight the top guys. This is like what they announced to the world. Right. So it was like, well, if that's the case, why wouldn't you give Raymond Marutala a chance to shine? You know what I'm saying? And, and rock with him. And he's a challenging opponent. Right. No, he goes with Claggett, who's a power puncher. But other than that, he really doesn't have the speed or skill uh, or IQ to deal with a Teofimo Lopez. So it's like, you know. So Devin Haney, like I said, he's saying all of the right things. I love how he said initially he didn't want to be undisputed at 140, but he made it clear that he's not dropping any belts. You understand? So that rumor can be put to rest. He said that he wants to be undisputed at 140. He said uh, in another interview that he wanted to openly, he openly called out Subrio Matias, Tiafimo Lopez. He's looking for the smoke with Tank, right? And so that was good news to me. Now, does, am I, does, is he guaranteed? Right. To be able to pull it off. No, but that's what it's about. Right. That's what it's about. It's about challenging yourself and, and seeing what your limit is. And right now, Devin Haney don't seem to have any limits. Right. I'm not underestimating Ryan Garcia. I hope he's training, but, you know, we all know what type of fighter Devin Haney is and how they come with the game plans and how they're usually prepared for every type of situation. Right? So I don't see Ryan, what Ryan can do outside of catching Devin Haney with a, with a, a powerful shot that's going to hurt him and give Ryan Garcia the advantage outside of that. It's almost like you got to give Ryan Garcia a punch his chance. And I hate to do that because they do have history. They three and three. Right. But anyway, if y'all can hit that like button for your boy, I certainly appreciate everybody that's coming through. You know what I'm saying? I just ask as you come in, hit that like button for your boy. And so I think it's actually pretty good because if it is true that Devin Haney and I mean, not Devin Haney, if it's true that Devin James and Everett Spence Jr. Right. If it is true that they are no longer a team. You know what I mean? If it's true that they are no longer a team, then Bozy is a very viable option. So is Robert Garcia. But I would argue, though, right? I would argue, like it says, can Bozy and his fix every Spence? Because Robert Garcia said he needs people more than just yes men. Salute to La Jessica in the building. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for coming through, sis. Always good to see you. Happy Friday. I hope you had a good day. You know, Caps and 4G came through. Yep. Always good to see him in here. Dope channel alert. You know, I got to add him on there. If he, I felt like I had him on there before, though. You know what I mean? But, um, hold on. Let's add this here. But, yeah, Bozy Ennis will be, I think he will be a great option. Hold on, guys. What's going on with this thing is acting up on me? I'm trying to put my... <clears throat> Give me one second, guys. I'm sorry. Let me just fix this. There we go. My bad. My bad. I appreciate y'all for sitting through that. My bad. So, yeah, but like Boney, Bozy in the, is a good option, and so is Robert Garcia. But the question is, is Evo Spence disciplined enough is what I'm saying. Because right now, he's not too old. Right. To make the adjustment. But not if he's not going to be 100 percent focused and dedicated to the sport like he would need to be like he would need, need to be laser focused. 
right? A lot of people are saying that, you know, Blu-ray um, and Evel Spence, they were, they were kind of like a good team. You know, Blue Way was keep, had Evel Spence really strong and everything. And for some reason, they stopped working together, right? But the I think the problem was because Blue Ray would always say there were a lot of things that Evel Spence didn't like to do. He said he could have had Evel Spence further than he was. But there were certain things that he just did not like to do. And so when you got a situation like that, Right. If you train in somebody to, to get their body right, you know what I'm saying? Or train in somebody who somebody, you know, somebody wants to lose weight or they want to come and get advice from you or whatever like that. And you give them the advice, but they don't want to follow it. They want to do it their way. They're not disciplined. And so they're not going to get the results that you know that they can get. They're not going to get the results that that, you know. That, that you're supposed to be able to get because they don't want to do the work. So even if he goes to Boziennis, like they're workaholics over there. They got Andy Cruz. They got, um, you know, Jerron Boutsinis over there, other fighters. Robert Garcia got a bunch of dogs in his camp, right? So it's like, how are you going to, you know, how are you going to deal with Evo Spence if he's not disciplined? Especially if he feels like he's the star of the stable, he's used to being that. So him going to, you know, Jerron Boots in his gym, and he may not feel like that unless they can make him feel like family. And, and believe me, come, you know, I've been, I've lived in Philly for a while. Philly do embrace you, you know, as long as you're moving right. Shout out to AMP. What up, Tough Glove? You don't have Bivol in your top 10. That's true. That's true. Not yet, though. Not yet. But it was between him and the names that I have on here, and I had to go with the names that I have on here, in my opinion. You know? So who do y'all think should train, you know, um, Evo Spence? I thought Virgil, you know, um, Hunter was a good um, suggestion, but Robert Garcia would be the most likely to me. But whoever it is, you know, Robert Garcia is no nonsense. Bozy Ennis is no nonsense. So you're not going to do what you want to do. Otherwise, they're just going to be like, go ahead. Go do your thing. And then also, if Spence goes over to the uh, train with Bozy Ennis, that kills any opportunity for Jerron Boots Ennis and never Spence to fight. I would think, I would imagine. Right, but I like Bozy in this. Like I said, you saw the thumbnail. He got a he got a camp full of monsters. Andy Cruz is looking spectacular. We all know how Jerron Boots in his get down. I, I'm waiting for him to go to uh 154 because you know what they have uh fights. You know we know we got the Hitchens fight, the Richardson Hitchens fight uh versus Limos coming up on Saturday on Dazzin. But they also got the IBF 154 pound IBF title. Hold on, let me share this with y'all right quick. Let me show y'all this right quick. Okay, right here. The Jack Coke uh versus Backroom. This is for the IBF vacant. The IB the vacant IBF 154 world title. So, you know. Let me put this over here right quick. Yeah. Did y'all see that? So the IBF uh, is about to be uh taken. So, you know, there's no titles left. So Evo Spence and uh, Terrence Crawford can either fight each other or they're going to have to fight Jack Colquet if he wins or Backroom if he wins. Man, I think Spence is done. I mean, Bud destroyed him, but Bozy see dollar signs. That true? That true? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Is he done, though? Can we say, is he the first fighter that we've seen get destroyed and come back? That's why I don't say, that's why I don't feel like I can just say he's done. To be honest with you, I don't feel like I can just say Evo Spence is done because he only took that one beating 
it was a bad beating, but we've seen people get beat worse and come back. Salute to Jackie Hernandez in the building. I hope you enjoyed your birthday because I enjoyed mine. You know, I really hope you enjoyed it. Happy Friday to you. But yeah, but so when you look at the style of fighters that Bo, that uh, Bozianis has in his stable, Evo Spence is the oddball out. So the, he said he would add to Evo Spence. Now, mind you, there's no serious discussions between the two. So don't let it's, it's just like they put it out there like, yeah, I'm interested because they got the question. It's not like I don't know of any paperwork or any office where, well, yeah, would tell Spence to come over here or official invitations like that. But they said online in an interview that, yeah, you know, when people ask them, would you train them? They're like, yeah, I'll train them. I would love to train them. I'll just add on to what he has because Evo Spence has been fighting the same way for a long time. And for what I understand, most of the boxing is reactionary. Like you just, is instinctual because you've been doing it so long. So it's like, you know, it's like an automatic response. Your body automatically responds to certain situations. Whereas if you're not trained in that discipline, you start thinking about what you're going to do you know, which causes you time and pain ultimately, you know? So that's what I'm saying. Like what, what we all know that what Sp Spence needs help with. At one point he was defensively responsible with his aggression, but he kind of abandoned that and I mean, abandoned that and decided to go more rock'em sock'em style. Right. And you know, both uh Bozy is gonna train you how to be a complete fighter. So you're gonna have to move around, you know, you're gonna have to train like they train and not complain about it. You know, but I think that's a good choice. But I think that probably a better choice, since he's already fighting like a you know more in the Mexican style, based on what Robbie Garcia did to for um, bro, what was the one who fought Floyd Mayweather? Maidana, right? How he fixed Maidana, I think that that would be a great um, trainer for Evo Spence. You know, Bozy is not bad either, though. But I'm just saying, as far as the styles go. Any experience with the styles? Because I happen to know that from, from what I've seen, right? Jerron Boots Ennis used to have a problem with heavy aggression, high volume aggression, because that's how he lost those fights to Gary Antoine Russell. He got outworked a lot and roughed up. He like Gary made it real rough, and I haven't really seen Gary fight like that in the pros. You know, he he he's a dog. He a dog if he needs to now, but he's more like skilled. He comes from he he approaches the game more from a skilled perspective. You know, but Javon Boots I mean uh, Bozy Ennis for every Spence, not a bad option, not a bad option. Ultimately, Derek James and every Spence. I mean. You can really say Derek James brought Evo Spence as far as he could, but I think that, you know, they had that chemistry or had it at least before the money got in between them. You know, that, that, that important chemistry that you build up over years, right? Like that trust, right? Like that, because with the trust that they built, built he can tell Evo Spence something and Evo Spence will listen or believe him because he knows him. But a new coach, he might say, oh, I, I think it'll work better this way. You know, he might try to start using his own, leaning on his own understanding, as opposed to listening to what his trainer or his coach is telling him. You know? But yeah, so I just heard this news and I was like, wow. Okay. And, and, and this is further uh, goes to show how was Evo Spence going to be prepared? Say they didn't uh, suspend Fundora, unless they're extending it that way to give Spence enough time to find a trainer and settle in the training camp. But ultimately at, the, ultimately, at the end of the day, I think it's even possible that Derek James and Evo Spence might just get back together, man. 
unless Derek James is like, nah, I'm out. You know, just renegotiate that money and let him get back in. But Robert Garcia did also say that Derek James, he didn't say Derek James was wrong. He explained the situation. And from what he explained, Derek James is really wrong to be asking for pay-per-view, a percentage of the pay-per-view. Because Robert Garcia said he usually, they usually get a flat fee. They usually get a flat fee. So initially, I thought Evel Spence was being shysty to the man that helped bring him to the level that he was. But it just might be that Derrick James don't know how to negotiate. Right? He feels slighted as opposed to coming to Evel Spence and be like, listen, man, let's talk about, you know, let's renegotiate the money. A bigger flat fee or something. But to say you want a, a percentage of the man pay-per-views... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's like saying like partners. And I and y'all gotta remember too. If y'all go back and watch the videos last year, me talking about Derek James, especially when he was high on his horse, he was had one trainer of the year twice. Everybody kept praising this man, and I was seeing his action. And I always said that he's becoming the star. He's becoming the he he feels like he's just the biggest star is ever. Like he's becoming the star as opposed to being just like the, the celebrated trainer. And like we all know Bo Mike, right? We all know Bo Mac, but Bo Mac doesn't like try to be equal, put himself like alongside Terrence Crawford when it comes to this boxing. He knows that Terrence Crawford is the spear of the arrow, and that's how they carry it. You know, but Derek James, I feel like. The trainer of the year awards, it went to his head. And last year was a real hard year for him. It was a real humbling experience. You know? And now he got Ryan Garcia going up against Devin Haney. So, you know, I hope he's putting everything he can into Frank because I want Frank to, to, to really do well in this fight. I want him to do well. You know? But uh, like I said, if he can't get back to Derrick James, man, I don't know. I think I think even a Ben Davison would be, well, but that ain't going to happen. I, I'm not even going to go there at all. I'm not going to go there at all because he it would be no way he would choose an overseas trainer, you know. But I, I would like to hear some news about it. I mean, he does he hasn't spoken about it. Every Spence hasn't mentioned anything again, right? Radio silence after... Um, for, that he found out he's not going to get the Fundora fight either, right? And for all of the excuses that a lot of the Evo Spence fans are still making as to why he didn't look so well, you know, in that first Terrence Crawford fight, the fact of the matter is it was because of him. Because I was, I read a, a comment in D-Town's section, right, after D-Town's video, and he was like, well, if he felt Spence was in an issue, why don't he run it back? Why, why, why don't Craw why don't Terrence Crawford run it back, right, and, and see what happened to him this time? And then Detail and Boxing said exactly, you know, but they not gonna say that though. And then he loved, he put a heart on the comment. So some of these content creators, they not being honest. They not being honest with the people that listen to their channel. Because I would have been like, well, they were supposed to run it back, but recently, Evo Spence pulled out. Errol Spence recently just pulled out. So how are you going to say that, you know, well, tell Terrence Crawford if, you know, if, if he feel that confident to make the fight and you as the content creator know what's going on, right? You, you, you know what's going on, but you love to comment and then agree with the person. Like, come on, man. Come on. And that's the thing I don't respect. Things like that, right? Because sometimes we wrong. And sometimes we can support our fighter without, like, we can support our fighter while holding them accountable. Like, when we hold them accountable, that's because we support them. We want them to uphold our support. We want them to, to rise to the occasion. You know, but there's a lot of people that feel like you can't say nothing, you know, about the fighter. Or if, it's like some a hive mind. You know, that's why a lot of times when I look at some of these channels, I'm like, yeah, you know, they don't cap. Like, yeah, I can say it. You know, I've 78 Sports TV, like, he, I don't know, he's pro Spence for sure, but he don't cap. The fact is, he keep it 100. When it comes to the situation, he he tell all of them 
and the LDBC what it is. Now, with the LDBC, the, the smaller ones go out and, and do and say, and I don't know. But on his platform, he keep it 100. That's why I always say there's a difference between the fans and the, the Evo Spence fans and Evo Spence, uh, the Evo Sexuals. You know? And that is true. And so this is why I say, you know, Evo Spence, that was his own fault why it went like that, which we all know. But I want to see Evo Spence come back. I do. Salute to Dan Tan in the building. Sweet Lemon Cupcake for boxing in the building. Salute. I see you. Thanks for coming through. Hit the like button for your boy on the way in. We getting into the cooking now that people are starting to come in. You see the topic of discussions. I try to take it and bring it to the main topic slowly so y'all be here because I only be on for like an hour. Right? But it's like, man, Terrence Crawford did everything he had to do knowing he was going into the biggest fight of his life. So why you didn't do the same thing? So now we got to hold Terrence Crawford at fault because Evo Spence wasn't, he wanted to be one foot in, one foot out and go up against a guy who's all the way in. Right? And then it's like, okay, I understand you young, you partying, because listen, I'm not a professional boxer or athlete, right? So when I was younger, especially in my 20s, yeah, I was getting it in. We was partying, drinking, smoking. We was we was wilding out in our, in our youth. So I understand it. You know, I'm older now. I don't want to come from the perspective of judging them too harshly because of that on a personal level. But when you're in a profession like you in, where you can't play boxing, your life is on the line and you doing you you trying to do what yellow beezy do who's a rapper and i get the influence cuz that's your friend but bro you got to focus y'all in two different professions yellow beezy could do all of that they could do all of that partying and clubbing and but but you got to be at you supposed to be in the bed at nine o'clock getting ready to wake up and do everything over all over again tomorrow you know, take your vacations, have fun, but learn when to put the toys down and get to work. You know, Mr. Moet is in the building. What's good with you, long hauler? Maybe Earl was truly injured with the rib. Listen, and, and this is what I'm saying. I'm not saying that that wasn't the case. Who knows? All I'm saying all I'm saying about the situation with the rib is y'all got to pick one. I don't know why my shirt look crooked like I'm leaning over or something like that, but I'm not, guys. Right? Y'all got to pick one. First it was the rib. Then it was he was high. Then, you know, um, he didn't get the spa the last six months. He was weight drained. Right? Or You know, just so the bud was on snack. He had something in his gloves. He, he, uh, you know, he tricked every Spence. He took a tune up, you know, that's what, that's all I'm saying. And at the same time, if it was the situation, then why won't you rematch the man? Now I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not even going to cap because recently a lot of us Bud Crawford fans we have been calling every Spence out for ducking the rematch. I'm one of the biggest ones doing that, which is true. But 2 months ago I didn't even want the rematch. I'm gonna be honest with you because I was like there's no need for the rematch. Right? But since it had to happen, since he reenacted the I mean he enact he activated the rematch clause and we figured it had to happen, okay. So let's go. Only for things to work out the way they did and give us more ammunition ammunition to say they trying to issue on Bud. And the funny thing is, right, a wise man once said that it's a, he, Terrence Crawford actually just tweeted, before I even get to that, Terrence Crawford tweeted to Evel Spence when he got in the ring, sorry, sir, you lost. You got to work your way back up. And everybody lost their mind, right? They was happy that Evel Spence was getting the, the opportunity because he's family with the PBC, right? Ain't that what Lena Ellaby said? He's getting an opportunity because he's family with the ABC with the with the um PBC. 
I was going to say ABC. He's family with the PBC, which is understandable. There's nothing wrong with Al doing what's best for his fighters. Even Terrence Crawford understood that in the negotiations for the first fight because he said it. So there's nothing wrong with that. Right? But the thing is, I'm sorry, guys. Let me fix this. Okay, I'm sorry. Yep, you're right, Jackie. That's what I'm talking about now. You must be looking from the looking at it from the beginning. You know, but at the same time, yeah, stop holding Terrence Crawford accountable. That's nonsense. Yeah, I mean, it's not even, it's just a, a bunch of excuses, you know, to take away from Crawford. But at the same time, you know, he pulls out of the rematch. And we supposed to pull out of the rematch because he's citing medical issues. And then all of a sudden, his medical issues disappear. He's ready to hop in the ring and take the winner of Tim Zoom from Dora. And because he's family, it's allowed to happen, right? So he's with the PBC. He's family with the PBC. So let's listen, let's look at this for a second work and look at really the shit that I did in the sport. Mm. Nobody has beat 16 fucking world champions in a row. Mm. In today's time, can it be done? Absolutely. Everybody is your champion. You got 18 belts. In Everybody's every a fucking champion now. <laughs> a fighter can lose. Back in the day, when I was fighting, you lose, you got to start back from the bottom. Yeah. What? Wait a minute. Not half of the PBC saying what every Bud Crawford fan has been saying. That's that's not what just happened, right? Hold on a second. Back in the day, when I was fighting, you lose. You got to start back from the bottom. Floyd Mayweather said back in the day, <laughs> the same thing Terrence Crawford said. Hey, I'm going to give it to you one more time and we're going to let him finish. You got to start back from the bottom. Yeah. Now you lose, you fight for a title in your next fight. Now, the PBC is guilty of what Floyd said. So there's a conflict of interest somewhere. Is it me? He's speaking absolute facts in his video. But see, the thing for me is the PBC is the one Given Errol Spence the chance right after his devastating loss. The same thing they did with Sebastian Fendora. Before Sebast uh, Sebastian Fendora got this fight with Tim Zhu, he was knocked out. What you said, Floyd? Now you lose, you fight for a title in your next fight. It's nothing to be a champion in this era. Mike drop. Mike drop. That's how he that's how he carried it. Floyd Mayweather said it. Half of the PBC said what we've been saying. But while they're perpetrating, <laughs> right? They're perpetrating what they're saying boxing should not be. And low key, I feel like Floyd is still competing with these athletes, these young athletes. Because if you go look at this whole video, and it was a good interview, it was a damn good interview. So don't miss it. It actually is one of those interviews where you don't want to miss it. It was a good interview, okay? But he he seems like he kept saying that, you know, it's not like the same as it used to be. He don't have the same respect for the fighters that he, how it used to be. I think he still can competing with everybody and partly the reason why he's still competing with everybody is because everybody keep comparing themselves to Floyd. All of the new upcoming fighters want to be like Floyd. Oh, you're the next Floyd. You're the next Floyd. You know, it was that wasn't so much prevalent. Like when they had Muhammad Ali and Larry Holmes, you didn't always say somebody, oh, that's the next Larry Holmes. That's the next Muhammad Ali. Like everybody had the chance to be who they were in their greatness. 
So with all you hear all over the time, all of the young fighters coming to the game, whether they with your promotion company or not, saying they're going to be the next Floyd, they want to go to follow the Floyd Mayweather blueprint and everything like that, maybe he feels still some type of competition. And then everything somebody do, they compare it to his legacy. So it was almost like, you know, are, are they keeping Floyd around? Are they giving him a reason to feel some type of way? Some type of, uh, uh, you know, unappreciated. But at the same time, you heard what he just said, which was a fact. But it's the PBC perpetrating what he's saying. Well, they're one of the promotional companies perpetrating what he's saying. Slight conflict of interest, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah, he just, listen, you had to be in the best shape of your life. You know, and that was a bad time to have a bad day. Now, what they gonna say, Floyd Mayweather just hating, but right because even when Floyd says something before, when he said that, when, I, I think initially he said he picked Crawford to beat Spence. Everybody jumped on his head. Oh, you mad because Spence gave you a black eye? Remember that. You gotta get the hell yeah. out of here. Yeah. Will Boots beat Bud? Why isn't Bud gonna fight Boots? They are no doubt on another level. Well, see, long hauler. See, this is the thing. And I'm actually glad you're here, right? Because I like to get a little pushback. You know, I, I, I'm starting to get that more. And I, and I like that because I want the engagement, right? Here's the thing. This is really a dead argument for me. And the reason why it's a dead argument is not because I don't want to see Boots get his opportunity to shine because I, I think he's a phenomenal athlete. I always believed he was next up. It's unfortunate that the division at 147 is looking like it's looking right now, right? Uh, I feel like he can move up. But it's possible he can beat Bud. But it, but I don't think he beats Bud because of the experience in the IQ. Yeah, he has the athleticism. He has the youth on his side, right? But he's not a... When Bud was his as young as him, Bud didn't really fight like Boots fights now. You know what I'm saying? Like Bud's style developed as he got older. Bud was more of like a dog. A highly skilled dog in that ring. He didn't, he, he didn't have, he's never, his, I've never thought him and Boots style was similar. I think people just say that because they both switch hit. Right? They can both do it fluently. Even though Crawford is more comfortable as a southpaw, but the fact is he can fight just as good with the right hand. He just prefers, you know, the fight in southpaw stance because that seems to be the hardest style to fight in boxing. It's, it's smart. You know, but we've seen him put a lot of people down from orthodox position as well. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Definitely. But my thing is this. They, if Bud is saying he's not going down to why see i don't want boots to make his whole career terence crawford because if that's the case just move up to 154 and shake shit up there and start making moves because boots is way too young in his career to be this inactive and i don't know what's going on on the business end of it because i'm just a fan like everybody else so i can only go what i see and it looks like Right. I mean, we said, I mean, he's just too inactive. So, yeah, he's a dog, but inactivity can hurt you as well. Berto was one of those world champions. I know. Well, was Berto a world champion? I don't think he was a champ. Was he at the time? Was he the world champ? Was Berto a world cha the world champion at the time? But if he can, if he, if he's counting people that just had a belt, I mean, that's fine. I'm not, look, Floyd, early in his career, I remember him in the same situation Terrence Crawford was in, trying to get the opportunities and nobody giving him opportunities. I remember that, him going through that. Then I remember when he became Money Mayweather. And that's why I say this interview, because that's right. He used to be on Dancing on the Stars, WWE, and people would actually make fun of him at the time. When it was happening, because nobody saw boxers doing that back in the day, but we loved it because we were the young generation up and coming. We understood what he was doing was marketing. He was getting his name and face out there to everybody. 
which is something that these fighters are not doing. This is why I say stop everybody saying they're trying to be Floyd and they want to be Floyd. Just be who you are. Because in order to be Floyd, you have to you have to and, and, and do it like he did it. It's it's a lot that goes into that. Yeah, I think and Boots could make 154 easy. But why? Well, is it that he won't have the advantage? I don't see why. Do they not think his power is going to carry up? Like Jessica said, man, Boots going to get that ass whoop. He made way too many mistakes that Bud will expose. I mean, that's true. I'm not, look, I don't think Bud dog walks Boots. But I think Boots will rise to the occasion, right? But I think he outthinks Boots. Crawford is a chess player. Right? I think he outthinks Boots in there. Just off of the sheer experience alone. And it's not like Boots is fighting, you know, a, a older fighter that's 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 aged like an older fighter, right? Terrence Crawford almost looked like he's still in his prime, even though naturally we can consider him on the tail end of that, right? If not slightly going beyond. But it all depends. We might see Terrence Crawford's style switch up one more time to adjust to that. You know? And I was surprised to see, do y'all think, is, is Boots not still, is he not with the, the PBC yet? They said that he's still not with PBC. So as long as he's not with the PBC, he ain't getting no major fights. And you know, the PBC is all about that 360 contract. They're all about that 360 deal. Oh, but there's one thing I did want to say about the PBC that I do like, right? I found out something about the PBC that I do like. And this is why I say you can't like, you can't, it's like, I don't disagree with, you know, like I don't agree with anybody 100% of the time, but I don't disagree with them either, right? Like the PBC, I don't like how they keep the fighters inactive. Um, I'm hoping, you know, so far the first event went well, so I'm hoping it stays like that. But one thing I, I do know about the PBC, well, or for I've heard, is that they teach their fighters financial literacy, which is a great thing. Because there's always somebody in my comment section when I'm telling them how the PBC is just putting the business over the sport. Oh, well, let them make their money because when they drooling as and got dementia and they, and they old and they family got to help move them around and they going to be broke. What you going to say? They was a great fighter. And I will push back on that. That's a good point. Right. That's a good point. But the fact of the matter is most of these fighters that got rich and died broke only did so because they mismanaged their money. So when I found out the PBC, right, was really teaching them how to buy real estate and, and don't just throw all your money away. Right? So it's like you can't use that as an excuse no more because they're, you know, they're going to be set. Anybody that makes an extremely amount of money, you're going to have to invest it and and, and do things, move it around to make it work for you. So that they can be all right in the future. So at this point in Evo Spence's career, at this point at certain fighters' career, you know what I'm saying? Once they know that their future is solidified, yes, try to get your big the, the bag as big as possible. But, you know, go for your greatness as well. That's why I respect Evo Spence. You know what I mean? Salute to Mr. Moet for coming through with the two. I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying the content. Mar the Machine is in the building. You know what I mean? Boots was never with the PBC. He just fought under the PBC on brother like Gary Russell Jr. Yeah, and I think that might be holding him back as far as, you know, because Gary Russell Jr. was calling out Subaru Matias. Right? So I think it's all about this 360 deal with the PBC. But, you know, something got to give. But I think that's a great thing that they actually help their fighters uh, have some type of financial literacy so that they can understand and, and not and not 
die broke, you know, get old, broke, and have to deal with a lot of other fighters that we see have to deal with, you know, from the past. You know what I mean? It's crazy, but I think Bozianis is a good ass uh option, but I just don't think that him or Robert Garcia will get to will get to discipline Spence. I don't I, I I just don't see him. I, I think he's stuck in his ways. I think he is who he is. Um, and I, I don't know if he's refocused or not. I couldn't tell from seeing him in the ring. I mean, he looked healthy. But at some point in their career, not necessarily when he beat them for the sake of promoting himself, he did not win the the most belts. Okay. Okay, but I like I said, I feel like people should stop comparing themselves to Floyd. You know, let Floyd do what he do. Stop talking about his record, and yeah, we know he's undefeated and everything. But all of these fighters is protecting their oh, you know, Floyd. You know, just like they trying to be Floyd, and as a result, Floyd still feels like he's competing. That's why he's always bringing up his accomplishments and talking about himself. He, I don't know. You think he'll be able to do it outside of Texas? Has he ever done that before? I don't think he's ever done that before. But I, I agree. I agree. But it don't matter where you go. If you think, if you got the same mind state, you're just going to take it wherever you go. It don't matter where you go. You dig what I'm saying? But yeah, I got to learn how to do these polls. So that's the next thing I'm going to do because I wanted to put up a poll. So what I am going to do, right, is I'm going to um, my next video. I'm going to figure it out and then I'm going to put up a poll because I'm going to ask you guys some questions. But I appreciate everybody that came through. You understand? Engaged in the content. Like I said, I know it's Friday. On Friday, we don't ever get a lot of people initially, right? And then they always swing back around and catch the video on the spin around. So for those people, I want to say salute to you. Still hit the like button. Uh, get in the comment section, not your feelings. If you disagree with anything I said, right? I'm not here to really bash Spence. But like I say, you know, just I feel like he's a fighter that's stuck in his ways. He's been fighting the same style for so long that it will be even if they add it on to what he's doing now, like, would it be enough? Would it be enough? And also, what path are we needing um, Terrence Crawford and Everett Spence to take now that the IBF belt is not going to be vacant anymore? You know what I'm saying? Should they just fight those people that we really don't know and just go for the WBA and the, um, the IBF? Or should they wait on... Fundora and uh, Sebastian Fundora and Tim Zhu situation, or should they just fight each other? Because, like I said, it is an option for Terence Crawford to fight Boots. He might just do it. He might just do it. It depends. He said he got a couple fights left, right? Boots might be one of them. Maybe he gets backed into a corner and have to fight Boots, which is what the what they really want anyway. But if the Boots fight happened, would it be on PBC? Since Boots is not with the PBC, can somebody else put on the Boots fight? Hmm. Now, what would be dope is if Boots went up to 154 and got the IBF belt from the guys that's about to win it now, right? Then he can get that fight with Terrence Crawford if that's what he really want to do. That's a that's a that's a good way to, you know, put yourself in a mix if you're thinking strategically or making chess moves. You're Right, I believe that's why Boots is inactive. He needs to sign with Hearn and Daz. Facts, Bozy trains Cruz, who is a Hearn fight. Right, right, and Bozy act. I mean, uh, Cruz is active, and he gonna be active. Uh, Daz and don't babysit you. How hard would it be for Spence to improve defensively? It will be very hard if if he 
Like if he's if he's set in his if he's if he's set in his ways, some people they can't they they can't get outside their comfort zone. And then you got to remember too, boxing is mostly reflexes. Like just you're reacting because your body is so used to making those motions and everything. So you're reacting to the situation. You're not always really thinking unless you're trying to set something up, right? But your body for the most part is like a car. You know, you put your car in the drive, you drive your car, you stare in it, but the mechanics and everything is just doing what it do, you know? So you got to ask yourself, if he learns anything new now, will he remember it in the ring or will he resort to his old style when he gets hit? Or will he panic? We don't know how he's going to react. So we don't know what his punch resistance is anymore. We, we don't know any of this. Everything is still a question mark with him. We do see, though, we do see, though, that he's still uh, big. Is He don't look like he's working out to make weight at this point. So we know he's not training real hard in between fight. you know, since then. And granted, he just had the surgery, right? Supposedly the cataract surgery. Steven Espomosa said it was other issues as well. So we don't know. We don't know. And believe it or not, with all of that information, you know, people people are just never going to give Crawford his credit. But uh, if Bozy feel like he can tweak something with him, and, and I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about these trainers might be thinking about the bag. Because at the end of the day, you know, Who's going to turn down clients? Who's going to turn down clients? If I was a any type of trainer, if I had any type of business and I made my money through clients, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you coming off the street? You got yeah, yeah. I train, man. You, I'll make you a world champion. Whatever, whatever you need to know. Let's work together. But I believe, though, I believe that Boziennis does take pride in his stable. So he would put everything into making sure that Evel Spence is up to par. I believe Boziennis and his team will do their part. I believe they're going to do their part. But will Spence hold up his end of the bargain by being disciplined and listening? That's the question. Right. So anyway, that was my live for Friday. You understand? I will be covering the Hitchens limos fight tomorrow. If you guys want to come through and watch the fight with me or, or check out the commentary, you know what I mean? I'm trying to get good and everything around this. Um, again, thank you guys so much for checking out the content. If you couldn't make it and you're catching it on the spin around, I salute you. I appreciate you hitting the like button. You understand? And listen, uh, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, hit that subscribe button, become part of the Tough Glove family. We are a small family, but we are a strong family. And you don't have to agree with everything we say. All you got to do is do what we do and love the sport of boxing and with that said tough glove family i want to give a salute to jackie hernandez again happy belated birthday long hauler uh la jessica marta machine mr moet danton thank you for coming in hey i don't have no uh sound machine but all of that is coming don't worry one one we we gotta crawl before we walk we're going to crawl before we walk, but all of that is coming. So, but in the meantime, I'm just going to read out your names. You know what I'm saying? Dan Tan, everybody that came through, you know what I'm saying? Sweet lemon cupcake for boxing. Appreciate you seeing you in the building. AMP in the building. I appreciate seeing you. Caps and 4G, as always, thanks for coming through. It's always good to see another dope channel in here. And if I don't get your name on my dope channel alert uh, screen that I usually have up, charge it to my head, not my heart. You dig? Anyway, with that said, Tough Glove Boxing, we are out.